Hey Life Group Leaders, great to have a chat with you as we get into another week. Last week our group was rained out on Wednesday because, well, it was pretty crazy weather. I'm not sure how your group's going and we're always happy to hear. So if you want to drop me a text um, or drop me an email back um, once you've watched this video, that'd be super. We'd just love to know how you're going and uh, particularly if there's any, uh, any pastoral issues that you'd like us to be aware of that we can help you out with. So please consider that and uh, understand that uh, really helpful, that communication backwards and forwards. Even if you just drop me a note that says, hey, we're still meeting and it's going great. Uh, that would be really encouraging uh, as well. Well, this week we've got an uh, interesting study um, to have a look at. What, one of the challenges with the, uh, the study this week is at one level, it's relatively straightforward. We've got a number of parables uh, for us to work through. Uh, for some of your more mature people, they're, they're probably not unknown. And so there's a real sense in which we need to note the challenge and not just go, oh yeah, no, no, no I know the story. Um, so I'd love you to be praying that your people will be switched on um, and that in God's mercy, he might draw people into that, uh, into that understanding. The key verse we've got here in Luke 14 is, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And I picked up a verse in Revelation 19, 9, it says, uh, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Uh, today is going to be about uh, looking at weddings, feasts, banquets, and uh, how you should behave um, around them. And it's a really interesting and, and challenging little uh, little section. I want to suggest to you that there's good context immediately before it. And I'll just read to you this briefly. In Luke 13, 22, uh, we read this. Someone asked Jesus, are only a few people going to be saved? Jesus says in reply, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you. You toyed in our streets. But he'll reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evil doers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from the east and the west, the north and the south, and will take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and the first who will be last. Now, one level, this is a really uh, wonderful uh, prophetic piece. It, it, well, wonderful for us as Gentiles. People will come from the north and the south and enter into the wedding banquet. It's devastating for the Jews who, despite their familiarity with Jesus, will actually be on the outside. And so uh, see how the kingdom is pictured here as a feast, as a, a wedding banquet. And it's that theme that kind of runs through the section that we're going to look at uh, in chapter 14. So so we see a question uh, to uh, to Jesus. He, he looks at how the people are uh, picking their seats at the house of a, a prominent Pharisee. We see that in uh, 14.1. And uh, he tells them uh, to not take the place of honour. And you might think, oh, that's pretty straightforward. We already know that. Uh, I think it's a real challenge. And Jesus gives them a reason um, all the way down verse, uh, verse 11. It says, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. One of the themes that runs through this little section is a, a day of great reversal will come. So we already saw earlier, uh, the people who thought that they would be saved, that's the Jews, will be surprised on that day because the Gentiles will come in. Here it's the people who've chosen to humble themselves who will be exalted on that day. Then we have uh, a, a, a advice for how we run a luncheon or dinner. We're not to invite friends, but the poor and the lame. And it says in verse 14, although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. You see here, no earthly reward, but there is a heavenly reward. And so uh, the last parable that we, we look at here is then about a wedding banquet where everybody makes excuses about the fact that they can't come. And in the end, the owner of the banquet compels all the lame and the poor and the blind to come in. Well, guys, I... It's really good for us to think about this at a practical level. The practical level is how we're doing with hospitality as uh, we come out of COVID, um, as we start to feel more comfortable with having people in our homes. Are we seeking to exalt ourselves? Are we seeking to invite only our friends? Or are we actually looking to see uh, some sort of kingdom vision for the way that we run the hospitality in our homes? I really do think that's worth encouraging our people to think about. 
And then uh, I guess the other challenge is to think about our heart attitude, which is are we seeking humility uh, in our daily life? Well, there's a couple of practical points. Uh, In terms of running your groups, I'd love you to think this week about how to do prayer a little bit creatively, Um, rather than just plonking through everybody sharing uh, a million prayer points. uh, Ask them to share them in advance. And then ask people to pray from what they've already sent through. So whether it's on a phone or or something like that, say, well, okay, you've got Mary and you've got Kate and you've got Joe. And so so divide it up and get people to pray the points they've already shared. It'll make your meeting more compact in this uh, pastoral area. And I I really want to exhort you um, to be finding time for God's word. Well, uh, praying for you. Hope you're having a great time in your groups and uh, look forward to hearing how they're getting on. Thanks for uh, stopping by.